Hi everyone. Today we're going to make pizza. So it's a basic recipe using five ingredients to make a margarita pizza. You can add additional ingredients to your product. So you can add additional toppings, so things such as peppers, sweet corn and, and mushrooms, or you could add things like chicken and and other types of meat such as pepperoni or salami. So that's entirely up to you, down to your taste. Um, I'm going to weigh out my bread flour, so I'm using bread flour, but you could use plain flour. I've preheated my oven, ready to go, and all I need to do now is weigh out my 250 grams of flour. I am also going to add a little bit of passata onto my base with my tomato puree. Again, that's optional. So that's my flour in there. I'm going to use half a sachet of yeast. Okay, now uh, we don't want to waste that, so you might want to double up on the quantities here. So 500 grams of flour instead of 250, then you could use the whole sachet okay then you'd be getting more outcomes from the practical on a level surface I have already measured out my warm water and that warm water is going to help sort of activate that yeast so then it can start to to rise so the bread dough is nice and light and airy Okay, so I'm going to just put a well in the middle, pour my water in. Now you might see chefs put their hand in there and start combining it and kneading it and um, straight away. But what I would suggest is just um, start by using a mixing spoon. Okay, just so it gets to the consistency where you can put your hand in there and start kneading it. Okay, now at this stage, if it's really too dry and it's not coming together, it's not binding to create a dough, then you need to add some more water. Okay, if, it, if you've put a little bit too much water in already and it's really runny and sticky at this stage, you need to add a little bit more flour to make it to the right sort of consistency. Okay. So you can see here, the, the dough is starting to come together, rather than, like I mentioned, getting my hand in there whilst it's not fully combined, I've just used my mixing spoon to bring it together and it starts forming a bit of a dough. Okay, what I'm now going to do is just with the one hand, I am going to start bringing it together and combining it a little bit more. Okay, I don't want to put both hands in there, simply because you, you're going to get dough on your hands so if I've got one clean hand holding that bowl it then means I can turn on the taps to wash my hands okay so you'll know at this stage if you've got too much water in there or too much flour we want to make sure we get all of our ingredients mixed together and you can see now it's starting to form a ball of dough and you can see it's not too bad it's not it's not sticking to my hands my hands have got um, a bit of flour on but it's not sticking to my my hands which is what we're looking for so the outside of it is quite quite dry because it's floured but the middle section so in there if I rip it open it's still quite sticky okay so what we need to start doing is kneading it okay so we want to knead it by folding the the dough over on itself okay using this part of our hand to stretch it now initially I'm just doing it in the bowl okay just to make sure I've got all the ingredients in there um, combined but I'm going to move on to my work surface now and I'm going to flour it before I start kneading it. Okay, so 
the the kneading will help stretch it out so it becomes a nice stretchy dough so when we stretch it on our um, baking tray in a bit it's it's a little bit easier to stretch but it also makes the consistency in terms of um, dry on the outside sticky on the inside more even okay you can see that it's starting to come together and now I'm going to knead it on my work surface so I'm going to flour my work surface first so you can see just a little bit of flour make sure it's a nice clean work surface you might do it on a, a chopping board and all I'm going to do is I'm going to continue folding it over stretching it making it more el elastic and it just means that when I stretch it out for my pizza it's a little bit of a better consistency it doesn't rip I'm folding it over So you could start to, once you've kneaded it, you might knead it for five minutes and you can see it's coming together, it's starting to become a better consistency which will be a little bit easier for me to, to, to stretch out that pizza base. And after I've kneaded it, I'm going to put it back in my bowl and if you've got time, you're going to prove it. So you might see on um, like Great British Bake Off, they've got things like a proving oven okay however you can just put it in a warm place so on top of the oven in the bowl covered up with a tea towel or with a bit of cling film okay so you can see it's starting to come together as a nice sort of dough consistency I of course only put flour water and yeast into my bread dough however you could season it with um, a bit of salt you could put a little bit of oil in there as well just a maybe a tablespoon um, you could start running other sort of flavors through it uh, sort of might get some herbs in there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it into my bowl I'm going to cover it with a bit of cling film and I'm going to leave it for about 20 30 minutes you know, over the top of the oven um, or, or in a warm place to allow it to prove and you'll see it double in size and you'll see that um, as well as it sort of rising um, it'll look much more sort of light and airy okay so I've now proved my dough so it's now I'm feeling it it's feeling a little bit more light okay a little bit less sort of dense I could have proved it for a little bit longer and if I was making a loaf of bread I would maybe knead it again and then I would prove it for another sort of time period just so then it's um, well risen okay all I'm going to do just on a floured surface is I'm going to push out my dough to create my pizza base okay so you can see I'm just rotating the dough and I'm just making sure that it's it's even all the way round okay so we don't have thicker parts now if you haven't proved your dough um, it will rise when it goes into the oven maybe not as much as it could do okay however it will rise but there might be elements of it that did need to to prove okay you need to make sure you have checked the size of your baking tray so you can see that my baking tray you can see that just about fits on there you need to make sure that when you you you're shaping your pizza base it's not getting too sticky if the underside starts getting really sticky um, 
it's going to stick to your baking tray it's going to sp stick to your table so it's really important that it's floured and because i've kneaded it and um i've kneaded it a couple of times the consistency is what what we're looking for so when this oven bakes okay i know that it's not going to stick to my baking tray now what we're going to do now is we're going to add our tomato puree okay so if it's a new um, tube of tomato puree the end of it has um, a little point on it so you can pierce through okay and all I'm going to do not too close to the edge I'm just going to put my tomato puree across and I'm going to use the back of a spoon to spread it. Now I've said that I'm going to put a, an optional extra on there which is passata. Okay. Now you can put this on there and I would recommend it if you can if you can get some. Um, basically it can be quite sweet tomato puree, almost um, too sweet, almost a little bit um, too sort of tangy um, because it's concentrated so the passata will help sort of balance the flavour so I'm going to leave an edge all the way around because that is where my crust is going to rise so I've already got my passata ready to go and it's much more liquidy Okay, so I'm going to mix that with my tomato puree, again not too close to the edge. I want to put a bit more passata on there, okay. And then I'm going to put a few herbs on there just to add to the flavour so just in the lid I'm just going to sprinkle it you might have mixed herbs or you might have oregano or a bit of basil it's a nice little sprinkling Right, finally, we're going to put the grated mozzarella. So if you can't get hold of mozzarella, I guess you could use something like cheddar or you could use a combination. I've seen combinations being used. So again, this is down to your personal preference in terms of how much cheese you want on there. So at this stage, you could just put this pizza in and you've got a margarita pizza. Okay, I've said that I'm going to put a bit of salami on there. It's entirely up to you what you put on there. If you chop in ingredients, please be careful and use the bridge and claw techniques. Okay, so that's my margarita pizza. I'm now going to rip up some salami and put that on there. You could cut it up, you could put some ham on there. Um, it's entirely up to you. You can even decide if um, pineapple belongs on a pizza. That's up to you. That's your choice. Try and just make it evenly distributed. Think about where you may be going to slice it. And then you've got an individual pizza here. You might share this and um, serve it with some wedges possibly so my pizza is ready to go into the oven oven gloves on depending on size of your pizza and your oven type you know it could take 15 minutes it's something that you just need to keep an eye on until all the cheese is melted and the crust has started to go golden brown you know that that, that dough is well baked okay so I'm going to put a timer on for 10 minutes initially and I'm just going to keep an eye on it and then it might need 
like I say, another five minutes, might need another 10 minutes. So I'll see you when it's baked. So my pizza is ready to come out the oven now. So again, I'll put my oven gloves on, being really careful with that hot air. And I'm gonna take it out ready to slice, okay? So here we go, we've got my pizza. You can see that the, the dough has started to go golden brown. You can see it's risen uh, to create that crust. We've also got nice sort of golden brown color on our cheese and it's all melted. My, my pizza's now out of the oven. Um, I'm just going to get it sliced up and then serve it. Like I said earlier, this might be something that you might be sharing, you might add a salad with it or some wedges okay to create that to create that meal what i'd now like you to do is make sure you take a photo of it and i'd like you to submit the photos of your pizzas onto google classroom or via the technology email please i'm looking forward to seeing your responses good luck